All right, our next assignment can be found under assignment sheets with some resources. And that is assignment nine, just straightforward digital painting. And I have uh, the regular one page assignment sheet. We're gonna be doing something on just a white background with enough resolution to print as a 14 by 11 inch, you know, media. We wanna keep it around 350 pixels per inch. 11 by 14 or 14 by 11 and it can be either an animal or a uh, portrait and that can be stylized in any way you like you can see that in the photo bucket past examples so it can be an impressionistic monkey as long as it's head to toe or it can be a um, an abstract expressionist really sloppy you know portrait of your mother we're not going to worry about backgrounds for these so we're just going to work on, on kind of a blank white canvas background. You can always put in a, a background later. I say the rendering because it will be based on photo reference. It is a rendering. Uh, can be completed in any style, cartoony, psychedelic, drippy, realistic. Just try to find a way that's fun and relevant to your own personal taste, right? Your own way of approaching it. So if you have a certain way of, of coloring or um, using traditional paint, you can replicate that here or sketching with crayons or markers. So that's the assignment sheet. The resources are these different sets of slides. I know I've shown these to you before. I just want to remind you where they are. Uh, the first just builds on how digital painting is different than digital coloring. And digital coloring is anything that goes behind a real or implied outline. So the outline and the cleanliness of the outline is really important for digital coloring. In digitally, digital painting, you actually just work on top of sketched lines. And sometimes you don't even work on top of sketched lines, you work on top of sketch shapes. So you'll see this handout available for you in links, but here it is. This is a, a shape sketch digital painting that ends with a, a representational you know, fruit <laughs> painting. And here is a, a line sketched digital painting that ends in a a very representational fruit. And here is a past example from the class looking at a portrait of James Joyce, the author, a photo portrait, and doing a representational version of the painting, even though the colors are a little, you know, exaggerated. Um, but in so doing, you can build up different layers and you can also have different approaches, like this more abstract approach, which I liked a lot, um, taking away so much where it might not even be representational anymore, but you just like the, the colors and the marks all of that's a quality of painting. So we have tips and tricks here. We have past student examples, their testimonies, and then lots of kind of fantasy examples and ways you can approach it. So basically the level of um, detail in your process is really up to you and it's all very individualized. The other link is a, um, a presentation that was given by a student last semester that I just thought was really nicely put together about someone that works as as a freelance illustrator doing digital painting who happens to be you know only 18 years old or at least at the time that this presentation was done and has a really kind of straightforward digital painting illustration style and you can see kind of the the quick gif animations just blocking them in and some parts are detailed some parts are looser but you want to find your own kind of approach you know your own voice for these so I thought you might enjoy that. I was quite impressed by their work. Digital painting does not need to be really technical or really intimidating. It has to do with just how you use the brush and what colors you choose and how much fun you have with it. Okay, so now we have to choose what we're going to do. And I asked you to pick a subject matter, you know, either an animal or a person. And I decided to do this guy, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, right? Now, he's just a fun looking guy. And because he is a public figure, you know, not only are there multiple photos of him, I thought these two photo references kind of helped. They're from similar angles, they show a similar energy. But if I only use this one, it, he'd probably end up looking a little crazy, right? So I kind of will balance them between these two. I want him to look kind of intense and silly, but I'll, I'll use both of these. And if you don't rely, 
too heavily on any one photo, you're going to be less uh, susceptible to being <laughs> infringing on that intellectual property, right? Because remember, just like compositing a landscape, we want to really transform these images. The other thing that is helpful, here's another reference I liked. I liked the colors of the stained glass here. I wanted it to be pretty colorful. But I also looked at other paintings of him. This is a, a street art painting, you know, done as graffiti on a wall. This is a, an acrylic painting. This is a, a graphic design, you know, digital art done with words from his speeches. This is a watercolor painting, right? So all of these can help inform how I might do my own version. And then most of all, I want my own kind of inspiration. So my idea is kind of the silly idea. I started it last semester with these digital paintings. And I'm just doing these quick digital paintings to go into kind of a children's book, right? So the first one I did was Admiral Horatio Nelson as a pile of rocks. So there we have it. So this one is going to be the next page and it's Bishop Desmond Tutu stuffed silly with socks. So this is actually this really, really abstracted painting example that looks like kind of Helen Frankenthaler abstract expressionism. Um, that's something I'm going to be inspired by in how I approach this. And then I, I grabbed a whole bunch of images of socks and kind of the patterns and the colors and the fun of it. And I kind of want to just interpret that title with my painting. So this builds fun into it. So how do I set it up in Photoshop? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is open up all of my reference images. Open with Photoshop. And they're going to come in as multiple tabs. So you'll see tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four, yada, yada, yada. Then what I want to do, minimize this for a second. I want to open up my main photo reference or my main uh, inspiration reference, which is this. Uh, I also went to the Broad Collection, a new museum in LA over the summer and got to get this up close kind of detail um, photograph of a Takashi Murakami painting that I think is pretty inspirational too. So I'm going to take all three of these and open them with Photoshop. So I have a lot of different references. And now I'm going to say File New. And I'm going to open up my actual painting file. Now I want it to be around 11 by 14 inches. And I want it to be 350 pixels per inch. And I haven't done exactly that recently. So I don't, oh, here's one. So the height is 11, the width is 14. I'm going to swap that because my portrait's going to be taller than it is wide. At 350 pixels, pixels per inch, white background, RGB, 8-bit, everything else default. Okay, now I'm going to move that all the way to the beginning of my tabs. Right? And then I'm going to move, well, I'll show you what to do now. Now to organize it, I want to have my working space and I want to have my reference. It's just like setting up your uh, canvas that you're going to paint on and then taping up your reference to the right side because I'm right-handed. So what I do now is selecting on my, my first tab, I go to Window and Arrange. And I want to arrange three upstacked. Right. And what that does is it gives me three Photoshop windows I can look at simultaneously. I want to move this one to the very front. I want to take these others, that's, that's a glitch one. I want to find the ones that are most useful. And this is my main one, right? And I want to move that over into these tabs. And then I can use Command minus to kind of get it to the right size. And I can go back to my untitled. And then here, this is basically what I want. This is the one which shows this kind of crazy style that I'm going to try to try to use. 
Now, here are some of these others, other inspirations. I'm going to take color and, and finish inspirations and put them down here so I can scroll between them. I'm going to take the portrait and photo inspirations and put them here. I think this, this watercolor actually counts as one of those. This should go down here. So this is organizing your workspace. This should go down here. And to navigate you, you can use the little arrows. Now this one I'm going to put with the photo reference because it's pretty direct. This one I'm going to do the same. And then this one, that's my secondary photo reference. So now across the top, I have all examples that help me know what he looks like, right? And then all across the bottom, I have examples of like colors and finishes and approaches that might inspire me. All right, now I'm using my tablet and I need to set up my, my painting space. So you click here and you're gonna see my layers are right here. And you want layers nice and big. And you can go to window or a workspace and go for painting if you like. But you wanna make sure that your layers are nice and big. So I usually swing them out. But I actually prefer my defaults. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that our background, I'm going to double click it so I can lock it. I'm going to call this blank white, just like with digital coloring. And we're going to leave it white. We're not going to do anything to it. Then on top of that, we're going to make a new layer. And I'm going to call this my speed sketch layer. Now, the tool we're going to use most that we have not used much before in the class is the paintbrush tool. I know we've used it a little bit in Illustrator, especially the blob brush, and this is just a little different. Now, when you do the paintbrush, you'll see all the options up here. And you'll have some built-in ones, especially if you've downloaded certain brushes, right? So, for instance, if I take, and Kyle's brushes are really common, kind of free brush type if I take Kyle's watercolor brush and use it, you know, it will give me certain effects. And it already sets opacities and flows and modes. And you know, these things can be interesting, but we want to understand fully why they work the way they do. So I'm going to select that all, I'm going to delete it. And instead of using one of these default brushes we might have loaded, we're going to build our own. So I'm going to go all the way up and I'm just going to pick generic brushes. And the, the most generic one is the soft round pressure size, or even just the hard round pressure size, to show you why a tablet's so necessary. So if I use the hard round, which we've used a lot, and then I make it pretty large, because realize with pressure, I can either fill that circle or use just a tiny bit of it, right? Hardness 100%, opacity, opacity 100%, flow 100%, normal mode, um, black on white, I can get a sense of how this brush works. So if I push hard, it fills the whole circle. If I barely push, it fills up less. Now there's nothing wrong with this brush, except it's really, really clean. It doesn't really have any texture to it. So let's see how we can modify it. And for this, we go to brush settings. So. You can find this under window, you have brushes, just like we select here. This is your brush options. And I'm just using the default general brushes. And then you have a second window, which is brush settings. And brush settings is linked right here. 
And what's amazing about it are these options. They're kind of like layer styles. And you can apply them to, to almost any brush. So if I go to Shape Dynamics,